stories, fables, ghostly tales. Two rodeo riders make a bet of $5,000 that one of them can't ride every horse in their stable. In fact, there is one horse that can't be ridden in their stable, so you'd think that this bet would favor one of these gambling men. But a tragedy awaits one of our gamblers, and a mystery is born from the death of our rodeo champion. And just so you know, that five grand is equivalent to $89,000 back in its day. By no means a small bet, and definitely enough to want to kill a man. Welcome listeners, I have for you an old time radio episode from Mystery House, titled Death in the Saddle. This one was an interesting challenge for quality, but I tell ya, it was worth the effort. Every time I listen to these old time radio episodes, I'm reminded of the killer performances that these actors deliver. And I've grown to really enjoy the actresses in these shows. They tend to have so much machismo and deliver some of the best lines. So... Turn the lights off, the sound up, and get ready for a classic. Places, everybody. Set the scene for tonight's story, Tom. Death in the Saddle. Tonight's story opens in a dressing room at the rodeo. Burr Kelvin, a cowboy rodeo performer, sits with a moody look on his face as the door bursts open and his wife comes sailing in. Well, nice roping, kid. He was swinging a wide loop. You ought to pull down top money in the fancy roping without a struggle. We can use it, Burr. This rodeo racket's getting too tough. Me? I'd like to be heading back to Texas in the ranch. Well, I never thought you was yellow, Shirley. Listen, Burr, I got more what it takes than you'll ever have. But more sense, too, cowboy. I'm getting no younger fast, and this is a kid's racket. Hey, you heard him announce at the time that I made on the bulldog in this first round, didn't you? Oh, I'd like to see any kid beat that. You'll see it when Tommy Tanner comes in. Tommy Tanner, that phony cowboy, that no game. Ain't jealous of him, are you, Burr? Who, me? Jealous of that Johnny come lately? <laughs> Listen, Shirley, I ain't got any cause for being jealous, have I? Well, what makes you ask a question like that? Well, I don't mind my wife being voted the most popular cowgirl in the rodeo, but I don't want you getting too popular in the wrong places. You got funny ideas about the wrong places, Burr. The kid's a top-notch working car in. Got a profile and a voice. There's two movie scouts talking to him right now. Listen, Shirley, you ain't getting ideas about giving me the breeze for that phony, are you? <laughs> oh, you're a funny guy, Bert. Yeah? Well, I don't want my wife running around with other men. I'm kind of glad you feel that way about it, cowboy. But I can't see what you got against Tommy. He's a nice kid. You'd help him a lot. I'm having enough trouble taking care of myself without looking for somebody to help. Besides, he's going to help me a little. Huh? Yeah, he's going to pay me for a little experience. What are you talking about? Listen, if you're planning on getting that kid into one of your crooked poker games... Ah, no, no, nothing that smooth, Chiquita. A gag that nobody else on this barnstorm and corral would fall for. Just a smart guy, Tommy Tanner. What are you talking about? Well, he thinks he's quite a writer. He thinks he talks the Bronx language. He's the smoothest writer that's hit the rodeo circuit in ten years, and I've seen them all. Hmm, must have been talking to him. Well, I made Mr. Tommy Tanner a little bet. What? Well, listen, you go throwing our money around. How much did you bet on him? Don't worry. He's going to lose, so what difference does it make how much I bet him? I said, how much did you bet him? None of your business. Listen, if you got the idea our bank account's your personal property, guess again. I've pulled down nearly as much of that prize money as you have. I've trooped the country from one end to the other. I've worked like a dog, and if you think you can throw my money Nobody's away... Nobody's throwing your money away. Just doubling it, that's all. Bro, you tell me right this minute. How much did you bet with Tommy Tanner? Five thousand bucks, honey. What? Five thousand dollars? You lose that money that'll set us back nearly two years. I said I wasn't going to lose it, didn't I? Now quit yapping and listen to me, will you? The bet's a cinch. You think you can outride Tommy? Well, you I didn't bet him I could outride him. I bet him there'd be a horse here that he couldn't ride, that's all. But you don't know there will be. Oh, yes, I do. Listen, you know who's furnishing the Bronx for this rodeo, don't you? Well, sure, Bert Graham. Yeah, Bert Graham. And you know one bronc he owns, too, don't you? You mean Gray Bomber? Gray Bomber, the wickedest hunk of hell on hooves that ever twisted and turned and sun-dogged his way out of a shoe. But Gray Bomber won't be here. There ain't a cowboy in his rodeo would touch him. 
Well, Gray Bomber's killed six men. He, he can't be Rose. It's a publicity gimmick. Graham's bringing in Gray Bomber and putting stories in all the newspapers about the horse's record. And then he's offering a thousand bucks to any rider who'll take a stab at sticking on the critter. Oh, nobody's that crazy. Hmm. You bet they ain't. But my bet with Tommy Tanner is that there'll be a bronc here that he can't ride. That's all, see? And if I say Gray Bomber's the horse, he's got to ride him or cough up the five thousand. Yeah, come in. Well, hello, Tommy. Hi, Shirley. Nice roping you've done tonight. Thanks, Tommy. If you got time tomorrow morning, remind me to show you a little trick on the in and out roper. Well, that'd be mighty nice of you, Tommy. Listen, Tommy, she could teach you tricks about roping. Hmm. And about riding, too, I suppose. Well, you're going to learn a trick or two about riding, cowboy. A trick that'll cost you 5,000 bucks. I wish you boys would call off that bet. I suppose Bird told you to say that, didn't he? Well, no. He thinks he's got a one for sure, but I don't know. I don't like the idea. I got a sure thing, Tommy, and you fell for it like a chump. Ever have a sure thing go back on you, Bird? Look, this is one sure thing it couldn't go back on me. I bet there'd be a horse here in this rodeo that you couldn't ride. You know what Bronx going to be here? Oh, uh, you mean Gray Bump. Wh- what? Well, sure. Gray Bomb is coming in tomorrow. You knew it all the time? Yep. Oh, boy. I don't get it. You can't ride that horse. Want to put up another 5,000, Bird? Nobody ever has rode him. There has to be a first time for everything. Yeah, you're a worse sap than I thought you was, mister. Every tough bronc that ever bucked its way out of a chute has a gimmick. But nobody's ever figured what Gray Bomber's gimmick was. I have. I can calm that critter down to nothing flat. I got it all figured out. You're bluffing. You think I'd have bet $5,000 if it was a bluff? You can get another five any time you say so. You could be mistaken. I'm willing to take my chances on that, Bert. It's going to be the easiest $5,000 I ever made. Well, so long. You and your bright ideas. So this 5000 is just like in the bank, is it? Oh, now look, surely the guy's bluffing. Bluffing? Well, you clown, you might as well give him the money now. And I'll tell you something else. What? I've worked like a dog saving for our ranch. Our ranch. Now we'll be lucky if we can buy a pinto pony. You lose that money and I'm through with it. Just a minute, Tommy. Huh? What's the matter, Lottie? You been having a nice visit with Shirley? Now listen, Lottie, don't go get me. I'll get any way I please. And I'll tell you something else. Her husband's watching you like a hawk over a chicken farm. I ain't afraid of him. Well, you better be afraid of me. Who got you your breaks, huh? Who started you out in this rodeo business? Who grubstaked you while you were getting the feel of things? You need money, Lottie? Money. Don't you insult me, Tommy. We got an understanding that we're going to get married, and you just try back on Sure, her. sure, we're going to get married. You're working under too light a rain, Tommy. Let's get married tonight. Well, uh, I figured maybe after we worked Abilene Rodeo, I... You think I'm pretty dumb, don't you? What? You ain't working the Abilene Rodeo. You got a deal on to take some screen tests. Why didn't you tell me about that, huh? Well, who told you I was taking any screen test? Your little friend Shirley, that's who. Oh, just wait till I get my hands on her. I'm being given a double cross. Look who's talking about the double cross. You ought to know she ain't interested in you. She's looking out for herself and Burr, no matter what she says or how she acts. Why, that dirty little... Well, you ain't so nice yourself, mister. You practically admitted you've been planning a run out on me. You oh, cheap quit beefing. You got the wrong idea, cowboy. I ain't complaining. I'm just telling you. You try any fast ones on me, and you're going to get tied up worse than a bulldog steer. And now, the feature event of the evening. That popular cowboy, Tommy Tanner, trying to ride the roughest, toughest bronc that ever came out of Texas. Oh, he's getting into the chute now, I don't want to look. I'm looking, and I'm enjoying it. Ray Palmer, a bronco that's never been ridden, hold of a record full of death and destruction. Hold your breath, ladies and gentlemen. Are they opening the chute yet? Watch it, honey, watch it. It's going to be good. Here, found a gimmick for that horse, did he? Well, we'll see how much of a gimmick he's got. They're opening the chute now, Shirley. Look. No, no. I... Hey, well, what's going on here, anyway? Why, that dirty lousy... He's tricked me. What's wrong? Well, Gray Bomber ain't even bucking. He, he's walking out of the chute. There's something funny going you on. You and your crooked ideas for making money. 
weren't going to practically steal $5,000 from him, was you? He didn't have any gimmick, huh? What happened? I don't know. The dog didn't even work. Tommy just kind of toppled off right into the dirt. <laughs> What's it to you if he is hurt? The Bronx didn't hurt him, that's a sense. It wasn't the Bronx. If ever I saw a tame horse, Gray Bomber's it. What have you done to him? Me? What have I done to him? You saw it, didn't you? He just fell off with the horse not even bucking. <laughs> well, that wins me $5,000, sugar. But I was plumb lucky. Lucky? Listen, when you win any money, there's no luck connected with it. I'd keep my mouth shut if I thought anything like that, Shirley. Wouldn't sound good to folks. I don't care how it sounds. Oh, look at they can him off. He's unconscious. Sir, the smart Alec, right. Shh, wait a minute. But Graham's coming over this way. Oh, hi, Graham. Well, Tommy had a tough break, huh? That's one way of looking at it, I guess, Bert. Well, I mean, he's fallen off of a tame horse. I guess most anybody'd have trouble staying on a horse in Tommy's condition, Bert. Huh? Why, what's wrong with him? He's dead. What? No. What? He couldn't be dead. Maybe not, ma'am. But he is. You mean he hurt himself when he fell off Gray Bomber? I mean, nothing of the kind. He was dead when Gray Bomber came out of that shoe. But how? Why? What happened? That's what I am to find out, ma'am. I know about that bet you had with Tommy Burr. What's that got to do with? Quite a lot, maybe. You see, Tommy Tanner's been murdered. <laughs> So, Tommy Tanner was murdered. Well, who killed him? And what was the motive? For that matter, how was he killed? We'll find out in the second act of Death in the Saddle. Meanwhile, here's a brief message from our sponsor. And now, act two of Death in the Saddle. Burr, Shirley, Lottie Moran, and Graham are gathered in Graham's office. We gotta straighten this business out, folks. Well, I don't know what there is to straighten out. The guy died. He didn't die, Burr. He was murdered. The lawful kind of thinks there's a difference. I didn't kill him. No? No, I... Why should I kill him? You was betting him $5,000 he couldn't ride, Grave Armour. And he told you he had a gimmick on the horse. Well, I didn't believe him. Well, he did. You could see that plain enough, couldn't you? Uh, oh, I reckon maybe he did at that. Lucky for you he had that uh, accident, huh, Bill? Yeah, reckon it was. Pretty lucky. Lucky? You killed him and you know it. He was crazy jealous of him anyway. Jealous, Lottie? I ain't heard any of this. What was Shirley he... Shirley was making a big play for Tommy. She knew about him going into the movies. Why, you dirty-minded little... Be careful how you talk to me, Shirley. I'll be careful, all right. I'll throw a lasso around your neck and pull it till the Honda squeezes your gullet up. Pipe down, Shirley. No need to get so sore. So was she... Pipe can't... down, Shirley. You ain't my boss. Just a smart husband that practically throws 5,000 bucks away. I didn't lose, did I? Maybe not. But you got a murder charge hanging right over your head. Look, I don't even know how the guy died. I... That was pretty cute how he died, though. What? Tommy was using his jewel saddle. Yeah, I could see that all right. The one he always used for exhibition riding. But he never had it fixed up this way before. What way? The jewels on that saddle are set into little metal holders. And in each of the holders, somebody's wedged a piece of sharp needle. Coated with poison. What? The minute Tommy Tanner dropped into the saddle before the Bronx came out of the chute, he was a dead pigeon. Who'd been in the pack? We ain't gonna find the murderer by finding who had a chance to kill Tommy. We're gonna find him by figuring out who had a reason to kill him. That's easy. Lotta. Listen here, you. You've got a lot of nerves talking about me having a reason to kill Tommy. But we was engaged. Was is right. Tommy was trying to get rid of you. Got too big time for you. That's a lie. I heard the fight you was having with him. Oh, so you've been eavesdropping on me, huh? Listen, I'd like to show you how I wrap it. Oh, she so admit you was having trouble with Tommy, huh, Lottie? We wasn't having any trouble. Nothing that couldn't have been straightened out by getting Shirley out of the way. I don't know what Shirley'd have to do with your trouble, Lottie. She's a married woman. You don't get around much, Graham. Sure she's married, but she's kind of ambitious, too. She was looking for a chance to improve her position. Now, look here, Lottie, you can't talk... You fool, if you'd been awake, you'd have seen what was going on. Shirley was making a play for Tommy Tanner, a big play. She thought he was going to go places, and she was looking for a ticket right on the same train. When you make cracks like that, Lottie, it's a good idea to be able to prove them. Ask anybody around the room. Now, wait a minute. You girls are slowing things down. What? I'm trying to find out who killed Tommy. 
And you're drawing about who was Tommy's best girl. That don't make no difference now, the way I look at it. All right. Who killed him? Somebody who'd be better off because he was dead. Well, it don't take any Einstein to figure that out. Don't, Father. Who would profit from his being dead? Not Lottie. She did it out of spite because she was jealous and because she figured he was going to ditch her. She couldn't stand having folks know she'd lost out. Well, maybe. But from a money standpoint, she couldn't do herself any good by killing him. Tommy didn't have much. His riches was all what you might call potential. He had a big future ahead of him. The killing stopped that future cold. Sure. That's right. He could have been a great cowboy. And the charges you've been shooting at Shirley, they kind of end up the same way, Lottie. Shirley ain't any better off than she was with Tommy dead. She's $5,000 better off. Well, that's something to argue about. She didn't win the 5000 and it wasn't her who was going to lose it. The way I look at it, there was only one person going to be any better off with Tommy dead. And that was... Yeah, yeah, me. I know what you're thinking. Well, I didn't kill him, Graham. And I ain't going to be made a goat. Nobody's going to ask you to be a goat. But you're the one guy had a chance to line his pockets from Tommy's death. I ain't a killer, I tell you. I never... What time was you in the tack room, Burr? Well, just before the steer bulldog in the van. I had to get my stuff. And that was about an hour before Tommy got his saddle, wasn't it? Reckon so. Was anybody in the tack room with you? No. I ain't in the habit of taking along a valet or nothing when I get my stuff. I think maybe we'd better turn you over to the police, Burr. Think again then, Graham. Oh, Burr, you fool. Put that gun back in your holster. I ain't getting sent to no jail for something I didn't do. Put that gun away. Oh, so you want me to get arrested, huh? You've been trying to get rid of me for quite a spell. Sure. I ain't good enough for you anymore. Say, you're all wet about Burr being the only person who could profit, Graham. Why? If Shirley could kill Tommy and fix it so Burr would be the full guy, she'd get Tommy 5000 and Burr too. Why, she could make more money out of this than anybody. You're just kind of hoping, Lottie. Nope. I'll stick to Burr for my man. I'm going to call the police, Burr. Get away from that phone, Gray. I ain't scared of you, Burr. Yeah. Oh. Now, I'm warning you, Graham. Next time I shoot, I don't aim at no telephone. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a little talk with Shirley. There's some sense to the remarks that Lottie's made about her trying to frame me. Oh, Burr. No. No, get away from me. Oh, you can't. Help. Oh, Graham. You won't let him. No. No. I'll get you for this Burr that takes me the rest of my life. You ain't going to get nobody. Now that you've confessed. Confess? Why wouldn't I confess? Well, you hit me in the face and knocked me down and twisted my arm to the breaking point. If I hadn't confessed, it'd have been nuts. You mean you're denying your confession? Of course I'm denying it. And I reckon I gotta start working you over again, Shirley. Oh, for the love. Oh, Graham. Why do you can't let him kill me? He's got a gun. He's crazy mad, Shirley. I ain't hankering to dispute with him. Your confession's true and you know it, Shirley. You kill Tommy. I don't go trying to get out of it. Oh, listen. If I'd have wanted to kill Tommy, I'd have done it a lot easier than the scheme that was worked. And if you think you're going to make my confession stand up in court, you're going to look like just as big a sap as you really are. Yeah? Why? Because I'll show the police a ticket. What ticket? The ticket to Reno. The ticket to Reno? What? Tommy had you licked on that bit. It was a big time and he's heading right for the top. What's that got to do with a ticket to Reno? Plenty. Tommy was giving me the money to go out to Reno. I was going to skip after tonight's show. I was going to get a divorce from you and marry him. That's a lie. Oh, no, it ain't, and you know it. I've got plenty of proof. Ask the lawyer that was advising Tommy on his movie test business and see what he says. Tommy'd been getting more than movie advice from me. You're a sweet little woman. You are. Well, what do you expect? We're throwing away most of the money we've been able to save. I wasn't doing no such thing. You saw for yourself. Even when he was dying, Tommy was able to put a gimmick on Grey Bomber. The Bronx stopped cold. You saw it. He even told Graham what the gimmick was, and, and Graham admitted it might work. What? So he told Graham, huh? No, no, he never said nothing to me about That's it. That's a lie. He told me he'd talk to you. Oh, what difference does it make whether he talked to Graham or not? He had a gimmick on the horse, all right. That was easy enough to see. The important thing is that Burr knew about the gimmick. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Lottie. But why? A good buck and bronc that can't be rode. A horse like that's worth as much as a winning racehorse in the rodeo business. Oh, maybe. I've turned down some big offers for Grave Armor. Oh, that's beside the point. Sure it is. You do a little less talking and more listening, Graham. 
Tommy talked to you about the way he was going to calm Gray Bomber down. No, I knew nothing about oh, it. Oh, yes, you did. Tommy told me. There wasn't any reason for him to lie to me about it. Oh, getting smart, huh, Shirley? Gray Bomber was worth a small fortune to Graham, as long as he couldn't be rode. But once a cowboy put the gimmick on him, once the secret was out of how to keep Gray Bomber from bucking, <laughs> that horse wasn't worth a dime. Hey, I never thought of that. So the fellow that stood to profit the most from having Tommy Tanner die before Gray Bomber got broken was Mr. Graham. You're crazy, I tell you. Running the rodeo, you was in a spot where you could slip that saddle of Tommy's out of the tack room and fix it up in private. <laughs> you think anybody take a chance of having folks walk in on him while he was doctoring the saddle that away? Well, that's right. I think it'd be kind of smart to go to Graham's office and kind of rummage through his stuff. I'll do it. What do I look for? Lots of things. Needles, maybe. And poison. No, you don't, Lottie. Don't forget I got a gun, Graham. Uh, yeah, that's right. You have, ain't you? Well, let's see if you want to shoot Lottie. <laughs> Just stand right in front of me while I back out of here, Lottie. And once I get to my car, you, you won't... killed Tommy, didn't you? Sure, sure. You think I'm a little smart aleck who owned the best horse I got? The one that's worth the most money? Come on, Lottie. Don't try to get loose, cause I got a gun, too. Oh, shoot him, Bert. You got her. Now listen, I can't shoot Lottie. She ain't done nothing. Oh, where's my rope? Yeah, yeah, right over here. What are you going to do? Come on. We got to run to catch her before they get to Graham's car. Now, hurry. Keep him covered with your gun in case he tries to shoot me. If he does, you got to take a chance on getting Lottie, maybe, but you got to get him. Don't worry. I'll protect you. All right. I think we're getting close enough. I got to drop the rope down pretty accurate. And you're the one that can do it, kid. Let us sail, Shirley, and good luck. Oh, get it right now. Yeah, right over his head. Look, look, he's pawing at it, trying to get it off. I figured he would. Careful. Now. Yeah, smart work. You got it right around his neck. Now pull it tight, Bert. I ain't strong enough. Yeah. That idiot. He's trying to get into his car with the rope around his oh, neck. Hold on, Bert. Yeah. He threw her down. Put on the rope, Bert. I'm a trying to, but it's cut my hands off. Why, oh, you pulled him right out of the running car by his neck. <laughs> Could I ever tried to haul in with a rope? That broke. I heard a crack. Is it? Is it did? You sure is. Good work, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon so. Well, I suppose I better call the police. Oh, I'll, I'll go with you, Burr. You will? What? Well, I thought you was through with me. Oh, not if you'll have me around, Burr. I, I made a mistake. I, I was slow called yet. Well... If you've got over it, there's no use yapping around about it anymore, I reckon. And uh, I'm kind of sorry about the beating up I gave you, Shirley. Sorry? Hadn't ought to be for us. Made me kind of, well, feel that you was quite a fella. And even if it was for something I didn't do, I, I guess I had it coming on general principles. <laughs> Well, listeners, quite the simple, clean, and brilliant narrative of a 1940s mystery episode. There are some questionable relationships represented in this episode, like the abusive relationship in which the woman agreed that she had the beatings and abuse coming to her. That just wouldn't fly in modern times. And how they wanted to go to the police after they broke a man's neck. A murder, of course, is still a murder. They still killed someone. But in all... A great listen nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know if you had any issues hearing it or feedback, and I'll do all I can to improve them over time. Should you have two seconds spare in your day, swing on by my iTunes page and leave a review. The easiest way to get to my iTunes page is to click on Leave iTunes Review on my SoundCloud account. In doing that, you're helping me way more than you may realize. And my lovely listeners, have a brilliant weekend. I'll see you Monday for some terrifying Skinwalker stories. As always, till next time. <laughs>